Hello, Polygoners! Welcome to the Hope Team League Finals, brought to you by Crave Jerky, as well as Dagor, StarCraft Reddit admin, and, uh, you know, us here at Polygon Gaming. Tonight, my co-caster is none other than the great, the awesome, the amazing, Bel Air. Yeah, well, <laughs> thanks for all that uh, nice and warm introduction. Yeah, man. Shaft, it's... It's a pleasure to be here, and uh, I guess we are all looking forward to a nice evening, or, uh, well, at your back end, more like an afternoon of Star Trek yeah. 2. Well, it's kind of an evening for me. I haven't been to sleep, and uh, I've been up all night, so we can call it evening. I'm, I'm down with that. Anyways, man, uh, this is Hope Team League Finals. The teams have gone through both the elimination round as well as the round robin round. The two top scoring teams are with us tonight. That is going to be Risen and Psystorm fielding their best players, and this is going to be one best of seven. And if Psystorm, who is actually the lowest scoring of, among these two teams, they did not have the highest score in the round robin that was Risen instead, um, they have to win two best of seven. So if they win this best of seven, it is loser's um, bracket, um, uh, loser's finals bracket format. Sorry, that's a mouthful. Um, <laughs> but uh, they, so they have to win two best of sevens, whereas Risen only has to win one. And remember, this is Risen as well as Team All In. They have merged under the one um, Team Risen roster banner. Um, so you could see uh, uh, players from either team. And uh, we'll, we'll be getting into the uh, first game. I believe it's going to be a Zerg versus Protoss on Ascension to Ire, man. So uh, what are your thoughts, Zerg versus Protoss? I know, you, actually, you play Terran, is that right? Yes, uh, that's uh, totally right, Shaft. Um, but uh, I guess I've seen enough games to have uh -huh. an assumption on this map. Um, mm -hmm. To be honest, um, on this map, I often see the Zerg just going links and uh, tr trying to cut off the third of the Protoss just mm -hmm. to make him wander around uh, uh, if he can even, uh, well, <laughs> put down an expansion at once, mm -hmm. or uh, he is just making harassment with uh, mm -hmm. drop links or uh, drop bane links. This is something I see over and over again uh, in the mm -hmm. past. Well, months, uh, or let's say weeks. I mean, since, since BlizzCon, it's got so popular as a yeah. play style. It's like everybody uses it. And uh, in Mass Infestors uh, mm -hmm. with Neuro Parasite against the Golden Armada, which mm -hmm. was intended to be the best uh, yeah. army composition you can have with uh, Dark Templars and mm -hmm. whatnot, you can crush it with that. So why don't, uh, why shouldn't the Zerg go for it? Yeah, I, I think that's definitely, um, you know, fairly smart smart analysis, and, you know, definitely since BlizzCon we have been seeing that. So we're going to be uh, hopping right into this game, because um, here on the bottom right-hand side of Ascension to Ire, he is the pink Zergy McFerguson, playing for Team Psystorm Gaming, it's Warren. I like that decal right to that hatchery. I yes, like the uh, Psystorm logo, it's, mm -hmm. it's just awesome. It is. And then the... Top left, it's from the team Risen, the Protoss in blue, Jetorix. I hope yeah. I uh, just pronounced them right because that's always a problem for me. <laughs> yeah, we just call him Jet to be honest. He's actually the manager for, for Risen as well. So he's he's choosing to send himself up first, kind of get a scout out for what the uh, Sidestorm Gaming roster looks like and then he can feed really good information to his uh to his players and uh that actually we've had a conversation about that that's actually like his yeah. his methodology here so it's interesting tactics and we'll see how it works out against uh Cystorm mm -hmm. warren who i've actually trained with um uh, quite a bit and i know him to be All a very right. aggressive player but in this matchup he does tend to do that off three bases so we'll see exactly how he chooses to get the three bases and we've already got a stargate coming out right now for uh for Jetorix, which he has shown himself to be a very very strong stargate player sometimes going mass oracle sometimes going for the golden armada um definitely mixing it up pretty much at all points it, um, it's not a bad starter at all because you can pressure the link actually and just uh, when you lose the oracle with no damage then mm -hmm. it, that's a problem but mostly you can pick up some drones mm -hmm. or uh, just make sure that the enemy has to lose some drones to get spores mm -hmm. uh, so this is uh, 
quite a little hit to the economy as well. Yeah. And if it stays alive and you kill some drones and come back with the second oracle, that's mm -hmm. basically nuts. It's, yeah, uh, worst case scenario, it, it is a spellcaster, so you can constantly be regenerating that energy and getting utility out of it, even in the form of revelation. It's like free map packs. So no matter what, going for oracles is a great transition, yes. even into different technologies. Yeah, and the, um, when we think about the late game, if you just put down massive um, stars and swords, yeah. uh, the, the traps are everywhere, and the, the Zerg will scout and say, oh, okay, send one link in, and then this whole army is running into the second stars. Mm -hmm. um, you're basically uh, trapped, uh, and you get greeted by a lot of units from the drone boss when you get out of there. Yeah, this oracle sneaking into the main, but there is a spore crawler and a queen that agreed it. Does lose about half of its whole damage, does uh, try to retreat into a queen, but is going to get away. Um, really good play there by Warren, good defense. Jeterix responding quickly. Now there was a little bit of a wing harass over here on the third base of Jeterix as well. Pylon overcharge, going to force that away. These lings being forced to camp outside here a little bit. Uh, Bel Air, um, this is a little bit of back and forth action. No real aggression here. Do you think uh, we're just going to see you know these pokes for a little bit while longer, or is something actually going to happen? Uh, si since uh, I I'm assuming that that poke uh, before uh, one of them uh, really shows some army, and I guess the Protoss will be the first one to show, uh, you know, to rip off the gloves. And you see it now. The second Stargate is added right away, mm -hmm. and that calls for Mass Oracle, as you already pointed out. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe we will see uh, air heavy place there right here. Yeah, and, uh, I think well, the Mass that's Oracle, that's when it, when he's done it before, he's done it off to Stargate very, very quickly, and he yeah. didn't bother to get the Phoenix. I think the Phoenix in this third base play is going to show us more of the Golden Armada style. We do see the third Stargate being started now. Um, Phoenix oh, wow. great at eliminating Overlords off the map, and with the really good scouting by Warren, he's actually been scouting pretty much non-stop this game, I, I think shutting down these Overlords is going to be critical. He has not bothered to actually get a... Uh, Pneumatized characters. We have two speed. oracles going on, and the natural. Mm -hmm. oh, oh no, it's the third of the Zerg, but there was no real damage done. The queen was in place, mm -hmm. and there are more to come, so uh, no real backdoor here for the oracles to do some damage. But he is producing more. Um, and he's even chrono boosting them, so uh, he's not even relying on the surprise factor you see sometimes mm -hmm. that the Protoss just. Uh, yeah, keep getting you know, oracles, but not showing them. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just constantly uh, using them, doing stars uh, wards and whatnot. And he's already at free and trying to set, take his his fourth base behind that. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, look at this: the, the Zerg just put down his fourth, and the Protoss is even. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, normally the Zerg, of course, wants to be a base ahead. Now, we do have these Oracles, which I honestly didn't expect. I was not expecting mass Oracles, but he's absolutely doing it. You called it. Now, the Queens and the Hydralis is going to force some of these Oracles back away from Je um, from the Hatchery, but the Hatchery has taken a lot of damage, and there's starting to become a, quite a big number of Oracles here. This could actually spell the end of Warren's, uh, Warren's expansion here, and that would really set him behind, because, again, Zerg wants to be a base ahead. Being a base behind is like two, being two bases behind in any other matchup. Yeah. But I don't see the Oracle strong enough to kill the Hydras right away. He can no. use Revelation and just make sure not to run into them uh, mm -hmm. by random. Or if the um, Hydralists get out of position, he can definitely uh, capitalize on that. But yeah, not not going to be able to take those in a head-on fight. I, I, I still see the problem on the Hydras. I mean, uh, at the moment, their the numbers of Hydras are not high enough. But as long, but when the ball gets too big, mm -hmm. and they have a range six, so there might be just too much DPS. So your oracles die right away, and you need like 20 uh, hydras for that. Uh, then the oracles are totally useless. <gasps> but like this, oh, two spores. That that won't be enough, I guess. He's yeah. just popping the hatchery to death, and, and backs off. Well, losing one oracle, oracle is just yeah. This is nothing to worry about, really. This is. Such a punch into the uh, uh, crown jewels for the Zerg, to be yeah. honest. Definitely taking advantage of the fact that he knew exactly where those Hydralisks were. Really great uh, revelation there at the top of that ramp. And then just taking advantage of the fact that it takes ground units a little bit longer to respond. Yeah, follow up with Double Forge. It was a little, uh, a little Triple Forge? There for 
Triple Forge, oh yeah. <laughs> Get all the sweet upgrades you need for a super late game. I mean, he's here ahead. Yeah. Uh, th there's, we, there's no way we can discuss that. He is just ahead. He could even throw down a fifth, maybe. Honestly, though, uh, hold up, hold up, man. There's oh, investors wait. on the field. And the Zerg army supply is actually bigger than the Protoss. He he might be getting a little bit too ahead. He is he's giving Warren a chance here, man. Yeah, maybe. I okay. I I mean, look at that. Basically, all his army supply is Oracles. Yeah, yeah. This is actually so scary. So so he has three zealots and a tons of Oracles and okay, stars and swords. If he gets and a great fungal, man, this could be over. Oh my god, he doesn't know the infestors are there. The oh, fungal now goes he knows. Oh my oh, god. The oh my god! The hydralists are here, man! <gasps> Dude! <He's right>. Dude! <laughs> oh, Warren is sending at 20 army supply more than his opponent. He sends in the uh the weakened hydralisk to set off this stasis. He's sending in another hydralisk, just one hydralisk at a time, taking and now Ling. Oh, Taking the stasis wards out. Another great fungal. Oh my god. Bel Air, man. This looks over. The oracles are coming back again. And the magic button is. Well, it's pressed, but I guess that's not enough right now. He is really struggling to uh, deal with this Hydras now. I mean, Zealots are not the best. They have charge, but look at the upgrades. The Hydras are at 2 nil, and they just shred uh, the gateways and the pilots, which are here. The Mother Shipko uh, mm -hmm. did go down as well. So, uh, how many options do we have? Well, he needs to get some ground units on the field ASAP, and there's just not enough tech buildings, production buildings to do that. Now, he is chasing these Hydralisks away, but once he hits the creep, this battle turns around again, and the Hydralisks taking advantage of the fact that he has hit the creep, and the Fungal Growth does go down. Uh, one Zealot trying to chase this army, but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Not very efficient. Okay, let, let's uh, check the income. This is something that the Protoss really can rely on. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at this. He, uh, he earns like 1k mm -hmm. more. He just did trade in army within the last fight, so... Um, to be honest, no real harm done, because he can remax, he can work that out. Oh, he's just planning to get the fifth. But well, in general, is that Ling underneath the Nexus? You're right. He fuck? didn't do any economic damage, and the 111 upgrades have completed for the Protoss. However, there is one major issue for the Protoss army. It is mostly gateway units. He does not have the production of higher tech. And Hydra Infester absolutely counters gateway units. I don't care what gateway units you're making, there is not enough on the field right now for the Protoss, and the Zerg what, is what, moving what, out. What he needs now, I mean, Storm is not through. He has a couple of um, High Templars, but he could he could use some good air units, to, me, to be honest, because this is the only tech he has. Like, yeah, like it's Mother not Shirt, enough, some, man. Some carriers, it's but I don't enough. think that he will get this, the time to actually get it. Yeah. Oh, no, the fungal and the bailings are streaming in. The green tsunami of death. There's nothing to block. The high templars are on the way back. And where's your meat shield? It's, yeah. You have nothing, basically. Yeah. Your pants down in a in a in a dark night. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he just didn't have enough ground army in that initial fight when he had so many oracles. He lost so many oracles, he didn't have any tech to support that gateway unit. And this is this is gonna be it, man. Some really great play here by both players. Jeddark's doing his best to hold on here, but Warren breaking through here at the third base, fourth base, fifth base junction, man. The fungals. It's it's all it was all about the fungals. GG is called and Sistorm Warren taking the first game here. Yeah, dude, that was incredible play there, man. That was probably, like, one of the sickest games I've seen in the Hope Team League so far, dude. And if this is I really the way... Go yeah. I really like the opening of the Protoss, though, but mm -hmm. maybe he just, like, overcommitted to that air uh, oracle uh, mm -hmm. uh, stuff, and uh, maybe he should have done just uh, some uh, Robotech. I, I really Honestly, like Adepts. If the Robotech, after losing all of those Oracles, would have been the correct response. However, before losing the Oracles, maybe only make two Forges. Maybe cut out four of the Oracles, throw some Stalkers and a lot of Zealots into that army. Because the big issue there was he just didn't have the Gateway units to support the Oracles. Those Oracles were constantly retreating, and that's how Oracles are supposed to be used. But when the Hydralisks forced 
the oracles to engage directly or you know lose that base he chose to engage directly and that just reset the tech and he did not have the ability to do that he was not expecting those investors and honestly it was brilliant um because the the typical style that you're seeing right now um pre-blizzcon was hydroling baneling right but investors have become popular because investors replenish their energy whereas you only get one usage out of banelings so it's far more gas efficient if you can skip the banelings to get the investors earlier and that's exactly what we saw there from warren so honestly i just like the the choices that were that were made there because he immediately knew what to do and how to shut down that stargate just by what units to skip i guess he just assumed that uh, mm -hmm. with that uh, high cost attack of um Mm -hmm. Stargate units, uh, he will have uh, less gas for ground units. Um, yeah. He didn't go for Robo, so mm -hmm. what is the thing he could warp in? He had to collect Council, he has gone for the Chargelets, mm -hmm. but you cut that whole tech, or mm -hmm. if you even call it like that, you right. cut it off with a Fungal Grove, and he just hit, uh, did hit two perfect fungals yeah. where he just crushed the whole army mm -hmm. and the Banings, uh, you know, whoop, 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 mm -hmm. and that's yeah. end of story. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happened there, man. But, well, we are going to be... But if, if the games stay like this, mm -hmm. I need no trousers after the next games, I guess. Yeah. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.